to Elicitine's reviews and this is my video for the 10 most overrated episodes in a Star Trek. So uh, I say this for all of my top 10s but it's especially important here to keep in mind that this is just my opinion and my opinion alone and this is especially true of this video because the whole point of this video is for me to express an opinion that is different from most people. <laughs> so this is how I've kind of decided uh, what I count as overrated. I am looking at how I feel about an episode as compared to how other people feel about an episode and looking at the discrepancy and I'm ranking it by the greatest discrepancy between how I feel about it and how the general fandom seems to feel about a particular episode. Now the primary metric that I am using for this is IMDB ratings. So I'm looking at two things on IMDB. I'm looking at their raw star rating. I uh, think that 8.5 or higher I consider to be uh, one of the higher, higher rated uh, episodes in Star Trek. 8.5 is a very strong rating. Uh, and if you're up at 9, then people love that episode. So um, I'm looking at 8.5 or higher as a really strong ones. And I'm comparing that to, well, I would probably give that episode like a five. <laughs> so to me, it's overrated. Um, but even more so what I'm looking at as how the episode rates within its own series. So if you go to IMDb and you click on The Next Generation, for example, you want to look at a particular Next Generation episode and see how that is rated. Uh, you can click on top rated and it will uh, show you the rankings of every Next Generation episode by star rankings, by star ratings. Uh, so the highest rated episode, which will be 9 point whatever, would be number one and then it just goes down. So I'm looking at, is this episode in the top 10 of Next Generation or top 15 or top 20 of Next Generation? Whereas for me probably doesn't crack my top 50 like so i'm looking at that a lot in fact i think i'm going to use the phrase won't make my top 50 a lot of times in this video um however imdb is not the only thing i'm looking at because i'm also taking into account just a general discourse that i have heard over the years about certain episodes if i'm getting a lot of people telling me how great it is like on my youtube channel in the comments or on other people's youtube channel and their top tens i'm looking at other people's top tens and top 20s of different star trek shows and uh, people consistently seem to have this particular episode in top tens or have i just heard a lot since i was a kid in some cases since I've, like, i was a kid i've been hearing some of these episodes are the greatest things since sliced bread just from everywhere around me um and i just don't think that they are so i'm looking at that as well so primarily the imdb rating um but i'm also taking into account um, what I have generally heard about the episodes too. And that does have an effect on some of the rankings of my top 10 here. Um, so I should also point out uh, that I am strictly looking at discrepancy. Uh, so that will include episodes that I hate, although there's only two of those. Most of these episodes I would say are okay. They're fine. I just don't think that they're as great as everyone else makes them out to be. There's a couple on here I actually generally enjoy. I just don't think they're the greatest thing ever, as other people make them out to be. Um, but there are two episodes on here that I just flat out hate and think are awful and some of the worst episodes in Star Trek. And yet uh, they get a lot of praise and a lot of love. Uh, I think... Uh, everyone has different opinions on what they find overrated. I hope that when you watch this, maybe you can find one on here that you agree with me on. But odds are you're going to disagree with me on most of these because that's the whole point of this video. Anyways, enough of the preamble. Let us jump in to the 10 most overrated episodes in Star Trek. Number 10. At number 10, Carbon Creek, 
from Star Trek Enterprise. So on the IMDb ratings list, this comes in at number six on the Star Trek Enterprise list with a rating of 8.5. But it's worth noting that the number one rated Enterprise episode has an 8.6. And numbers 2 through 7 all have an 8.5, so this is technically in a six-way tie for second place. Now, I have not yet compiled my list for my favorite Enterprise episodes because I haven't finished my rewatch yet, but I can guarantee you that this will be nowhere remotely near my top 10. This is ranked above vastly superior episodes in the season three zindi arc it is ranked above episodes like the councils ranked above shockwave part one and two and damage and just tons and tons of episodes that i view as vastly superior to it now i guess that uh, people are really into this concept of vulcans visiting earth in the 1950s and find that really interesting i don't know i don't find it all that interesting i don't think that um the original five Star Trek shows did a very good job of diverging from our main characters. Lower Decks has done it a couple times with mixed results, but I think generally you need to stick with the main characters. I don't think it works just to uh, throw in one of the main cast members and have them play an ancestor of one of our main characters and call it an episode. It reminds me of that uh, Voyager episode 1159, which is one of the most boring episodes in Star Trek history uh, with Janeway's ancestor also played by Kate Mulgrew. I just don't think this concept really works well for me and I just don't buy that this happened. So at the end of the episode, Trip asks some very valid questions like, so how did he live another hundred years on Earth with nobody ever finding out? And like, when he died, did they check his remains? Did they not notice that he was a Vulcan? Like, how did they ne nobody ever notice this? And uh, T'Pol gets around the question by pretending that she was faking them out this whole time, that she was pulling one over on them. But then we get that moment at the end of the episode, dun dun dun, this actually really did happen. So Tripp's questions become very valid and the show never answer them because they don't have answers for those questions because this whole concept makes no sense. Now, I don't hate this episode. It's fine. It's okay. I just don't think it is remotely close to being one of the top episodes of Enterprise, in my opinion. At number nine, the Pegasus from Star Trek The Next Generation. So this, again, has that strong 8.5 star rating on IMDb, and it comes in all the way up at number 16 on the IMDb ranking list for The Next Generation. For me, this most definitely would not crack my top 50. Does it crack my top 75? I don't know. It might not crack my top 75. I'm not sure. Now, there are far worse episodes than this one, and I don't hate it. I guess the concept of the uh, cloaking device that can go through subtle objects is pretty interesting, I suppose. But I feel like people really latch on to this dilemma that Riker goes through. Uh, whether or not to support his captain or s to support the evil admiral and i kind of don't buy it uh, so first of all i don't buy that there was ever a time where Riker was just this little lapdog that uh, pointed a phaser to defend his evil captain that goes against everything that has been established by him i think this represents that downgrade of season seven uh, writing uh, that i have noticed i think the quality has gone way down and by the time i get to season seven the writers are grasping at straws trying to find stories because they've run out of ideas and they're trying to retcon Riker's character, and I don't buy it. I don't have any buy-in for this dilemma that he's going through. We know what he's going to choose. Obviously, Admiral Pressman is evil. I don't buy this evil Admiral character either. It falls into that evil Admiral trope that I'm not a huge fan of. Uh, Admiral Pressman is exactly what Lower Decks was making fun of when they introduced Admiral Buen Amigo in season three, and he sits down and goes, <laughs> like, this is Admiral Pressman. I don't buy 
that an evil captain would rise to the ranks of Admiral and be this way. And I don't buy that the Admiralty would be involved in this conspiracy. This seems much more like a Section 31 thing. Like, I can buy that Section 31 was doing this, but not people in the Admiralty. I... I just don't have any buy-in for this episode at all. I, I think it's the season seven shitty writing and I, I don't think it's really all that great. So for me, this is absolutely not a top 20, a next generation episode. Even though there are episodes that are far worse than this one, it is definitely an overrated episode. Number eight. At number 8, The Menagerie, Parts 1 and 2, from Star Trek The Original Series. These episodes come in at numbers 11 and 12, respectively, on the IMDb ranking list for the original series. But more than that, these are episodes that I have been hearing about since my childhood, about how great they are. In fact, I am pretty sure that the first time I ever saw this two-parter, my mom was telling me about how great these episodes are. So I do understand though, to be fair, why people would think these are great episodes prior to 1986. 1986 is when The Cage was first released on VHS tape and therefore it was the first time that the general public was able to watch The Cage. And then in 1988, uh, it was the first time that The Cage actually was aired on television. So prior to the general public having access to The Cage, it makes sense to me that people would really like these episodes because it was the only way of seeing Jeffrey Hunter's Christopher Pike. It was the only way of seeing the captain that preceded Captain Kirk. It was the only way of seeing the original pilot episode of the original series. But now you can see it anytime you want. If you have Paramount Plus in the United States, you can stream the cage anytime you want. Which makes me ask the question, why on earth would you ever watch The Menagerie now when you could just watch The Cage? So when I watch The Menagerie, what I'm actually watching is Kirk, Spock, and a Commodore sitting around watching Star Trek. <laughs> like, I, I am watching characters watching Star Trek. They're watching The Cage. Why would I watch characters watch The Cage when I could cut out the middlemen and just watch The Cage myself? This episode is entirely pointless to watch. And on top of that, what this episode does is the most extreme, most ridiculous punishment for a crime <laughs> that I have ever heard of. Because the crime for going to Talos 4, for visiting a planet, is the death penalty. <laughs> and I think they put this in there to create stakes. Uh, for this episode. So the stakes are high for Spock. If things don't go well for him, he could die. Dun dun dun. So they made the stakes so high in order to hide the fact that you're watching an episode of Star Trek characters sitting around watching Star Trek episodes. <laughs> Uh, it just doesn't make sense uh, in the modern day. Now, in, at the time of this episode, they hadn't come up with the Federation yet. They hadn't come up with all the rules of the Federation and just how the Federation would operate. So, But you look at it now, though, the fact that the Federation would have a death penalty for visiting a planet makes no sense. And when Discovery v revisited this episode, it looked really weird when the, Michael Burnham was talking about how you could get the death penalty by visiting this planet because it just doesn't make any sense in modern times so this is an episode that just does not age well it was fine before you could watch the cage but now that you can watch the cage this is completely pointless and i think people need to let these episodes go and realize that they're actually not all that great and we're climbing to at number seven, Tinker Tenor, Dr. Spy from Star Trek Voyager. So this is listed as number 10 on IMDb's top rated Voyager ranking list. And it is a strong 8.5, another one of those strong 8.5 episodes. In fact, it's actually tied with other Voyager episodes with 8.5, but for whatever reason, it comes out on top of all the other 8.5 episodes. I'm not sure what IMDb's uh, tiebreaker system is, but in any case, it comes in in the top 10. 
And uh, this was not in my top 20 when I did my 20 favorite uh, Voyager episodes. I don't know where exactly this would fall because for me this is a mediocre episode and there's a lot of mediocre episodes in Voyager so it would be really difficult for me to sift through all the mediocrity and make a top 50. So maybe this makes my top 50. Maybe. I really don't get it. I, I don't get why this is such a well-loved episode. I guess people find it really funny and think it's a really strong Doctor episode. It's a pretty good character episode for the Doctor. I'll give you that. Uh, it certainly uh, precedes the ruining of the Doctor's character in Season 7. So, yeah, it's a pretty pretty decent character episode for him. I don't find it particularly funny. I just did a rewatch of Voyager like last year and I watched this episode and uh, there were a couple times where I went, huh, 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 huh. But I, I honestly don't think it's really funny, to be perfectly clear with you. Um, now, to be fair, I also don't think it's actively unfunny the way that some Star Trek episodes are, like Deep Space Nine's Rivals, or any number of Deep Space Nine Ferengi episodes, if I'm being honest, when they're trying to be funny, but it's just actively unfunny and irritates me. This is not one of those, but... I don't really find it that funny. So putting it in Voyager's top 10? Yeah, I don't get it. Uh, definitely an overrated episode in my book. Number six. At number six, Darmok from Star Trek The Next Generation. So this is ranked all the way up at number 14 on IMDb amongst all of the Next Generation episodes with a strong 8.7 star rating. And more than that, it's an episode I've been hearing about how great it is uh, practically since it came out. I've had several people tell me that this is one of their favorites. I've heard at least a couple different people tell me that this is their absolute favorite episode of the series. I've seen it on lots of top 10s and top 20s. It's very highly regarded. And for me, I give it one big heaping tablespoon of meh. <laughs> That's the best word to describe this episode for me. Meh. I mean, it's fine. It definitely does not come anywhere close to my top 50. Uh, I mean, I guess it's nice how Picard is forced to learn how to communicate with this species who communicates in a, a very different way. But you know what? I hate to tell you this, but I really think Star Trek Discovery Season 4 did this way better with Species 10C. It was much better done than this. I think my big problem with this is that I just don't buy that the species would evolve to have such a language. This language is not practical. It's very silly, which I think Lower Decks exposed by mocking it. I was so happy when they brought in that Tamarian character and just exposed just how ridiculous this language is and how little sense it makes. How would you evolve a language like this? First of all, what is the base language? You can't just speak in stories without having a base language with, with its own syntax and grammar and structure. And they don't really touch on that. They're speaking some language that is translated by the Universal Translator. And then they are speaking in metaphors and stories. What do they do if they're eating dinner and they want someone to pass the salt? Do they go, Gram Talk at the Great Wooden Table? Because Gram Talk passed the salt. What if Gram Talk also passed the wine? You might get wine passed to you. It's not a very practical language. And I suppose you could say, well, it's all about the inflection. You could say things different ways and it means different things. Why would you come up with such a complicated language? It, it really doesn't make a lot of sense to me. It's a very silly language and I just don't buy it. So one of the greats of the next generation not so much definitely a very highly overrated episode in my opinion give me a high five come on give me a high five dude at number five Tuvix from Star Trek Voyager so this is the first of two episodes to which I was referring in my intro when I said there were two episodes on this list that I absolutely hate. This was number three on my 10 least favorite Voyager episode ranking list that I did a few months ago. It is one of my least favorite episodes in the entire franchise. And 
If it were in the Voyager top 10 on IMDb and with an 8.5 rating, this would easily be my number one most overrated episode. But again, I'm looking at discrepancy. Uh, so it turns out this is only number 45 on the Voyager rating list of IMDb with a modest 7.7 .7 rating, which is why it's only at number five on this list instead of number one. So I'm thankful that there appear to be other people out there who agree with me uh, who and, and who are able to see uh, through uh, the writer's attempted manipulation and their contrived writing and their attempt to trick us with a phony moral dilemma where no moral dilemma should actually exist and what do i mean by that so if tuvix was a true conglomeration of tuvok and Neelix, you wouldn't have an episode. There would be no drama because the true Tuvix would just say, you know what? This is fun. I really enjoy living. I, I wish that I could still live. However, I really have to take into account Kessa's feelings. And I know that she really loves Neelix. I really have to take into account the fact that Tuvok has a family back on Vulcan. And most importantly, I really have to consider that Voyager is really trying to get home. And this crew desperately wants to get home. And their chances increase dramatically if they have a separate security officer and morale officer slash cook they, those are two separate people and that gives the best chance for the crew to get back and you know what since i care so much about the crew i'm just gonna just just go ahead and peace out here it was nice knowing you all and there wouldn't be an episode there would be no drama but in order to manufacture a phony moral dilemma and create false stakes the writers just completely took away the selflessness that both tuvok and and Neelix have, which Janeway rightfully points out in this episode, and instead inexplicably transformed Tuvix into a flaming narcissist who does not stop for one second to consider anyone but himself. It's just all about me, 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 me! I've only been alive for two weeks, but it's all about me, me! And by the way, when, when he's like, oh, I want to live! That is some of the worst overacting in all of Star Trek, and William Shatner was in Star Trek for a little while, so that is saying a lot. And I know there are a lot of people out there who swear by this episode, who really love it, and that is why this has to be on my overrated list, because this is absolutely one of the worst episodes in the franchise, and the definite worst example of contrived writing in the entire franchise. Four, he's a delicate fellow, he's a delicate fellow. Number four. At a number four, The Trouble with Tribbles from the original series. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Alyssa, why do you hate Tribbles? Do you not have a soul? Do you have a lump of coal where your heart should be? How could you hate Tribbles, Alyssa? How could you hate them? They're so cute and adorable. I don't hate Tribbles, just so you know. Yes, they're very cute and squeaky and, and wonderful and all of those things. I just think this episode is vastly overrated, that's all. So I will give this episode some credit for the impact that it has had on the Star Trek franchise. It has arguably helped to put the franchise on the map. It is a very iconic episode. Uh, this scene that I'm showing you here with Kirk covered in Tribbles is a very iconic scene. Even people who don't watch Star Trek know what a Tribble is. So sure, it gets credit for that. But as far as a Star Trek episode that I want to sit and watch, a Star Trek episode that does the things that I want Star Trek episodes to do, this isn't it. This is a 1960s style slapstick comedy, much like a Gilligan's Island episode or a Get Smart episode. And that is not at all what I watch Star Trek for. And that includes the original series. Sure, this is a really well choreographed, really, really well written slapstick comedy, but I don't watch Star Trek for slapstick comedy. Also, I think it gets uh, ignored a lot how this episode has the worst depiction of the Klingons in the entire franchise. The season two in general uh, was a little uh, weird with how they portrayed the Klingons, uh, but here they're just so ridiculous. And I'm not even talking about the fact that they look like humans, but just the way they behave. My 
you a Compton Cook that is nothing like the Klingons that we would grow to know and love in the next generation. Now, season one and season three versions of the Klingons are more similar to what the Klingons would evolve into later. This is just silly. Uh, this whole episode is just silly, and it's, it's, I'm sorry, it is not one of the top episodes for me. It comes in at number three on the IMDb rating, but I didn't even need to look at that. I already know this episode is legendary. I've been hearing about how great it is since I was a wee little child. So uh, to me, uh, I'm sorry, I don't hate Tribbles, but this is an extraordinarily overrated episode of Star Trek. Three, three, three. At number three, The Way of the Warrior from Star Trek Deep Space Nine. So this comes in at number seven on the Deep Space Nine ranking list on IMDb. And it has an impressive strong rating of nine, nine star average on IMDb. It's actually tied uh, with three other episodes with a nine rating. And for whatever reason, they put it last amongst those nine rated episodes. I still don't understand IMDb's tiebreaker system, but regardless, it's in the top 10. This is not in my top 50. This is not in my top 75. Is it in my top 100? Probably. I mean, there are definitely episodes that are a lot worse than it. Uh, but 9 star rating? I would have to rewatch it to give you my exact rating, but it's definitely somewhere around a 5 or a 6. I think this episode is mediocre in a best case scenario. This episode is basically just a framing device to get Worf on the show, and Worf never really fits on the show, at least not the way that he did in The Next Generation, and they totally just make up a position for him. Oh, you're gonna be the, uh, operations manager! Yeah, that's the ticket, or operations officer, or whatever. They just totally made that up just so he would have a position. Uh, but the main reason why I find this episode so vastly overrated is that it is the beginning of the really bad distraction from what actually made Deep Space Nine good, which was the Dominion story arc that they had started in Season 3, the intrigue about the shapeshifters, which they just kind of touch on here and there throughout Season 4, but most of Season 4 focuses on this dumbass Klingon plot that doesn't really make any sense. The Klingons are completely out of character, especially Galron. I really, really did believe that Galron was a shapeshifter because he was not acting like Galron. He was not smart. Galron, first and foremost, is a politician and he's smart at it. He's very good at it. He's good at playing the Game of Thrones, if you will, to use the vernacular of another show. But here he's doing the dumbest thing you could possibly do, which is bite the hand that feeds it. He understands as much as, you know, humans are weak and all of this, that the Federation uh, is to his advantage. It's to his advantage to have an alliance for him and he inexplicably goes against them for drama I guess to, to have a plot for season four because for some weird reason they didn't want to explore the Dominion thankfully they corrected this big mistake in season five and then did an even better job in seasons six and seven uh, so the entirety of season four, I think, is one of the weaker seasons of Deep Space Nine. And I know that's a controversial statement, uh, but it's because of this Klingon distraction plot that they never should have done. So this is an extraordinarily, very highly overrated episode of Star Trek Deep Space Nine. Just the two of us. Number two, number two, just the two of us. Number two. At number two, Dark Frontier from Star Trek Voyager. So this is the 14th ranked Voyager episode on IMDb, and it has that 8.5 rating. So it's actually in that group of episodes that are tied with uh, Tinker Tenor Doctor Spy, which I mentioned earlier in this video. Now, the reason why this episode is so much higher on my overrated list than Tinker Tenor Doctor Spy is that with that other episode, I think it's pretty mediocre. This one is the second episode in which I was referring to in the intro, in which I absolutely hate. It was, I believe, number two on my least favorite Voyager list. I think this is one of the worst episodes in the entire Star Trek franchise. Now, I think 
that uh, this episode was beloved by people who are a little younger than me who came up a little bit later in the, in the Star Trek timeline who maybe didn't grow up with The Next Generation and maybe Voyager was their first foray into Star Trek. And you know what? If you have nostalgia to, and tied to this episode and you love the Borg Queen and you have fun with this episode and it's really fun for you to watch, more power to you. I have nothing against you. But I think if you were going to try to make the case that this episode objectively has quality writing, I think you would have a very hard time making that case because the writing is absolute garbage in this episode. It has two of the worst retcons in Voyager, uh, one being that the Borg Queen purposely put Seven of Nine on Voyager. No, she didn't. There is no evidence to that whatsoever. It doesn't fit. It doesn't make any sense. They just made it up in this episode so that there could be some sort of connection between the Borg Queen and Seven of Nine where no connection in reality actually exists. And then there's the awful, awful retcon that uh, Seven of Nine's parents should be put in jail for child endangerment because they are Borg scientists, even though the Borg haven't been discovered yet. Nobody's heard of the Borg for another 20 years after that. But somehow, Seven of Nine's parents have, and they're studying the Borg and endangering their child's life. That's the worst retcon, and it's a really stupid idea. Uh, and the Borg Queen, you know, I've always hated her. I've always thought of her as an over-the-top mustache twirly villain, but this is when the villain that was already silly and ridiculous jumps the shark even further. The moment where the Borg Queen goes, Janeway! <laughs> That's the moment that she jumps the shark. It's like Seinfeld going, Newman! Like, I just laughed out loud when she did that uh, during my rewatch that I did of Voyager last year. I laughed out loud, and not because it's supposed to be funny, but because it's so bad. This episode is so bad, and yet it is highly regarded. It is basically tied for number 10, so it's almost in the top 10 in IMDb ratings, but it's number 14. But this should not even be in the top 100. Uh, this is one of the worst episodes in Voyager, and that is why it has to be number two on my overrated Star Trek episode list. Ladies, Ladies gentlemen, gentlemen, and, and people, people of all, of all genders, genders, I give, I you, give you, you number one. one. At number one, the most overrated episode in the entire Star Trek franchise, Trials and Tribulations. And so now you're thinking, Alyssa, you lied to us, you bitch. You said you didn't hate Tribbles, but clearly you hate Tribbles. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> this, this episode being the most overrated episode has absolutely nothing to do with Tribbles. It has to do with the fact that it is currently number two on the IMDb Deep Space Nine list with a 9.3 rating. And actually the last time I checked, like a couple months ago, it was number one. So I think it kind of fluctuates. But... Just in general, I always see this on people's top fives, top tens. A lot of people put this as their number one Deep Space Nine episode. And the problem that I have with that is that this is not actually a Deep Space Nine episode. This is a tribute to the original series. Now, it is a fun tribute. I can sit down and watch this and enjoy it and have fun. It's really cool to see Cisco and uh, Brian and Dax and Bashir like inserted into an original series episode. It's tons of fun. I love it. I, I can't say anything bad about it as a tribute episode, but it is a tribute episode. Calling this the number one or number two Deep Space Nine episode is like calling a Beatles cover band the best rock and roll band of all time. It's just a tribute episode. It doesn't have any of the things that makes Deep Space Nine Deep Space Nine. There's no struggle for Cisco trying to struggle with the fact that he's the emissary and the Bajorans see him as a god. There is no no struggle for Kira and trying to reconcile the fact that the, the Cardassians aren't all bad and trying to deal with her past and Odo struggling with uh, discovering that his people committed genocide. 
all of those things that's what makes deep space nine what it is and this episode does not have any of that so this is not a deep space nine episode it's a tribute episode it's not in my top 50 not in my top 75. now modern track actually did better tribute episodes where they actually paid tribute uh, to the original while also still forwarding the stories of their own characters in their own show discovery did that uh, with their tribute to the cage um and then uh, Strange New Worlds did it with their tribute to um, A Balance of Terror, um, where that was a really important Pike story. So you can tr do a tribute and still tell the story of your own characters, but Trials and Tribulations just didn't do it. And it deserves to be nowhere remotely near the top of the Deep Space Nine rating list. So even though I do enjoy it, it has to be my number one most overrated episode in all of Star Trek. All right, thank you so much for joining me for my most overrated Star Trek episode list. I hope you could find at least one that you agree with me on. And if not, try again next week when I come out with my 10 most underrated Star Trek episode list. And please subscribe if you have not already. And I will see you really soon. Goodbye.